Harp on Sports, the bar, podcast, media, audio, and radio network. What do we have in store for you on this edition of the bar? A little IRS iron fist as NIL deals not tax exempt. Uh, This coming from Ross Dellinger, Sports Illustrated, via the Internal Revenue Service. This changes a lot. It really, really does. So we're going to dive into that. Also, Gators punch their ticket. Out to Omaha they go once again. First time in five years. To me, the way it looks right now, there's two big threats for them. Uh, they're one of the three best teams out there. So how does this play out for the Gators? A uh, potential 10-day swing in that Cornhusker state. So we're going to look at that as well. Also, a little Daytona Duval. With the Jacksonville Jaguars, this report, actually consider playing their home games Daytona International Speedway, maybe a couple, but there's a curveball in this as well that I I think it would work as a novelty for a couple of games, but there's one point the NFL has got to say, okay, no, we're not going to do this. Again, Harp on Sports, the bar, podcast, media, audio, radio network. Follow, share, like, subscribe at Harp on Sports Twitter, at Harp on Sports Instagram, Harp on Sports Auditory Route, the bar via Buzzsprout, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Harp on Sports YouTube channel, Harp on Sports, the Facebook page, and of course, harponsports.com. Okay, let's start off with this first. (laughs) The NIL. It's been a discussion for over two years now, and it looks like there's some programs that are going to have to pump the brakes here a little bit. The IRS announcing that NIL donations non-tax deductible. So what you had for a couple of years here is people were trying to figure this out. You had people donating money. Okay, here's $5 million. Here's a booster giving $10 million. Great. And then they turn around and pay the players with that. You can donate to universities. I can donate to a football program and they can build a statue. They can build an indoor practice facility. That's a tax write-off for me. This isn't. So all these business owners, all these big money contributors, now the IRS is going to go back through and comb through and give you a tax form for this. So let's face it. If you donated $10 million to a collective and that collective went and paid that athlete, you're going to get taxed on that. So... What's that mean? Not only did you give money away, <laughs> you're going to have to pay on the money that you gave away. So I donated $10 million. and eh, eh, come back. Uh-uh. That's not a tax write-off. That's income. <laughs> so you're talking, oh my gosh, across all of college football, you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. Hundreds of millions of dollars. So all these programs, and a program that has struggled with the NIL is Florida. To their benefit now, programs that have doled out a ton of money in NIL, well, LSU baseball has. We know Texas A&M football has. Texas football has. Anybody that's doled out big-time NIL money, Tennessee football, ooh, baby. Mm -mm -mm. We're going to get hit pretty hard. Going to get hit pretty hard with this. And now, all of a sudden, uh uh-oh. In the past, it was, <laughs> in the past, it was, okay, well, let's just find a big money booster and solve all our problems. Now, you need to find the big money booster that's willing to take a tax hit. Instead of a tax break. You know, if I made three or four million dollars last year and I needed to get under that certain tax threshold and I was going to be taxed two million dollars or a million and a half, okay, well, I'm going to give a million to the university. There I go. I got into that lower tax bracket now. Not now. Now I'm going to get taxed on that money that I gave away. So what you're going to see, boosters, and this is where schools are going to get dirty because universities are going to start borrowing money from, it's going to get bad. Universities giving money to the collective, collective turning around, and there's going to be, this is ripe with fraud. But what it does do, and look, they're right. This shouldn't be tax deductible. It shouldn't. You're earning income. This is all solved. All the NIL stuff, if you just make the athletes employees, this is all solved. It's all solved. 
We just went through. If a conference would just come through and go, all right, you know what? We're, we're tired of this nonsense. And I've made mention of this time and time again. All the SEC would have to do is add a Monday night football component. It'd make four or $500 million a year with their Monday night, three, $400 million a year with their Monday night football component. You use all that money and pay all your athletes. You're good to go. You'd have leftover money. Done. Done. But now the IRS. Hey, IRS here. We want our cut. If the IRS comes after $50 worth of lottery ticket scratcher winnings, they're going to come after your $10 million I'm going to pay players donations. They just are. Taxman always gets theirs, don't they? And it's funny because once again, the federal government, as much as people want to bag on them, and I get it, I get it. Wasteful spending exists all over the place. But the federal government got steroids cleaned up in baseball, PEDs. The federal government cleaned up the NFL with concussions and player safety. Orrin Hatch, right, senator from Utah, broke up the BCS with threatening lawsuits after Utah wasn't allowed to compete and play for a national championship. The reason you have a playoff, college football playoff is because of Orrin Hatch. So government busts up the BCS. You're happy with that, aren't you? Government busts up concussions in the NFL. Or at least puts pressure on the NFL to fix that problem so their players aren't all dying at the age of 50. Government cleans up steroids in baseball, and now universities and presidents are begging government to clean up NIL. And they may just do it by just taxing you. There's no trick to this. It does change everything, though. So if you've been bad at the NIL or have struggled with the NIL, you're in pretty good shape. If you've been shelling out money, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Again, this is just solved by paying the athletes. But, hey, why would we want to do that? Let's make it more complicated. Let's make it more complicated. So Nick Saban should be very happy about this. Alabama was struggling a little bit with this. Florida was struggling a little bit with this. The schools that were doling out big bucks, USC's of the world, the Texas's of the world, the A&M's of the world, the LSU's of the world, the Tennessee's of the world, white knuckle it. <laughs> Buckle up. These, these next few months are going to be fun, especially when they retroactively go back and hand you about a 10 to $15 million tax bill. Now, here's the thing. If you're the universities, what do you do? If you're the universities, what do, do, you, do, you, do you reach out, back out? To the, I guess what's going to happen here is the collective is going to get taxed for taking this money, but the person that donated the money is going to get taxed. So does the collective then pay back the money? If I gave like $10 million and I thought it was a tax, or $5 million and I thought it was a tax write-off, now that's going to get taxed. So not only did I give away $5 million, now that now it ends up being, I give away six or seven by the time it's taxed. Oh my gosh, I went from saving money to losing money. Is school going to reimburse me for that? Name, image, and likeness. Now, the IRS lives. Give us our money. They always win, don't they? Always win. But if everybody hates government, especially Gator fans, gotta love the government here. We saved you. Harp on Sports, the bar rolling on. What else do we have in store for you? Uh, speaking of the Gators, headed back to Omaha. First time in five years. I'm impressed. Impressed with the way they've played. Baseball's driven on stats since the Gators lost to Texas Tech. In their regional semifinal, they've gone 5-0. They beat UConn, beat Texas Tech twice. Beat South Carolina twice. In those five wins, they've outscored their opponents 30-7. to So Florida Gators pitching has allowed an elimination, well, I shouldn't say elimination games because they weren't facing elimination in the Super Regional, but in their three elimination games in their regional and in their Super Regional, Gator pitching has allowed less than one and a half runs a game 
Good news for you, Doc. You give up one and a half runs a game, you're going to win the national championship. You are. They are getting pitching now like they got five years ago with Singer and Fiedo and those guys. That's what they're getting. To outscore your opponents 30-7. to seven. And Let's face it, South Carolina, in the last three innings, Friday night, Saturday, they weren't even close. Dominated. We're dominated. Now as Florida heads to Omaha, what were they, they're, having, they're getting great pitching. Great pitching. When they won the national championship six years ago, they got fantastic pitching. Scratched off enough runs to win. The last five games, they've looked like that team that's won the na- that won the national title. Now, look, as they head out to Omaha, to me, I wrote down, I said two, but there are three teams out there that are playing really, really well. And look, there are a lot of teams that are playing well as we start to head down that path of who they're going to run into. And one of the teams, I, there are four teams that I think can win the national championship. Four. Florida, Virginia, LSU, and the team that's the favorite should be the favorites, Wake Forest. Florida took care of Alabama during the regular season and in the postseason. Uh, Wake Forest punished Alabama. Wake Forest scored 30-plus runs in two games. Wake Forest has been the best team all year, and they're the best team right now. If I had to rank them, the, the teams that are playing the best baseball right now, number one, Wake, number two, Florida, Number three, Virginia. Number four, LSU. Those are the four teams that are playing the best baseball. And look, you're going to have other teams out there that, that, that have got Oregon, maybe, <laughs> right? Depending on what you watch. I mean, think about the teams that Oral Roberts, the Oregons of the world, the Tennessees of the world, the Southern Misses of the world, those teams, is they hit, but they, they don't hit on a dead sprint like LSU, Virginia, Florida, and Wake. Wake hit this on a dead sprint. The other ones are are getting there, but not with quite the hammer that Virginia, Florida, LSU, and Wake are. And it it, kind of sucks for Florida that they run into one of these teams. Now, Virginia struggled a little bit on Friday, but to bounce back the way they did Saturday and Sunday, what did they score? 25 runs in two games? Hit like nine home runs? So Florida's going to have their hands full with Virginia. It, it's Wake Forest's College World Series to lose. It's theirs. But if Florida Florida beats Virginia, Florida should find their way through the winner's bracket, in, or at least in through the first two games. Florida's first game should be tougher than the second game. That's right there for them. They, they could win the national championship. You bet they could. They play like they did the last five games. They're going to be right there with Wake at the end. They play like they did. Gee, I mean, even, even in the, even in the SEC tournament, they went for it. They just lost a Vanderbilt team that they had beaten what four straight times here. What South Carolina beat them three straight times. They avenge that. So Florida in good shape heading into Omaha in good shape. They just run into one of the four teams. I think that can win it besides themselves. So we'll see Virginia can hit Virginia pitch a little bit too. So it'll be a good matchup. Be a good matchup. All right, so there we are. But, you know, whether it's <laughs> Waldrop, whether it's Sprout, and Sprout wasn't great on Friday night. And, look, there's some decisions that you want to make there, right? Do you do you bring back Waldrop if you're the Gators and pitch him against Virginia? If you had normal rest and then Sprout the next two nights, do you shake up this rotation a little bit? All of a sudden, you've got yourself a situation where, let's face it, just the way things lay themselves out, right? You have Caglione that hasn't pitched, and he's gonna, it's going to be two weeks since he pitched. So on Friday night, do you go Waldrop and then come back with Caglione, or do you Sprout and Caglione and then Waldrop the two nights late? It'll be interesting to see uh, how Kevin O'Sullivan plays this out. Wanted to wrap with this. Um, Duval and Daytona as the Jaguars rumors start to circulate and we start to hear reports and the reports are true. Now, are they going to do it or not? Don't know. Jacksonville Jaguars considering playing some games at Daytona International Speedway should and once stadium renovations begin. Okay. 
Now, look, Daytona, when they changed the track about, what, eight, nine years ago, went through some major modifications. They set it up so there could be some football games played there. Like they talked about playing some bowl games there with the inside of the infield. I'm all for it under the right circumstances. The first circumstance, it needs to be at night. It needs to be at night. You're going to bake. There is, you see that? There is no shade there. None. At least Indianapolis has some shade. Daytona, no. Talladega, a little bit, but Daytona has none. So for years, Jags fans, oh, we're going to bake. It's too hot. It's too hot. Now you're going to play games where there's no relief? None? Go look at the layout. There's no relief. So I, I'm okay with you playing a couple games there. I wrote down, they should play a preseason game there. But this is one of these things that... You, could you imagine be, the, the Jaguars hosting playoff games there? In January, hosting playoff games there? If I'm the NFL, do, do I want a playoff game at the Speedway? Because the way the Jags are going to be here in two or three years, they're going to be up there, the upper echelon in the AFC. Do, do I want postseason games going through Daytona International Speedway if I'm the National Football League? You also have an issue too, right? I mean, if they go to Gainesville, then do you want Sunday night football games, playoff games on a college campus? It's a zoo enough on a Saturday night. You could do it on a Sunday. You can't tell me it's about the students then because you're going to clog the campus for a night on a Sunday night. So, uh, look, the, sa the safe and easy one is what? It's Orlando. Orlando's the safe and easy one. But not exactly in the best neighborhood. And you're going to bake there too. It is... Look, in three years, does the University of Florida begin construction in two years? Get that completed by the time the Jags want to come here? I wrote down this too. Look, if you're looking at it in any way, any feasible way, you could do what? You could do three London, three Daytona, three Gainesville. You want to do a nine-game season, that's what you do. Maybe do a, I don't know, Maybe a preseason game in Gainesville, a preseason game in Daytona, three regular season games in London. Then you circle back around and you do a preseason game or you do a Monday night football at Daytona. You could pull something like that off, but the postseason would almost have to be in Gainesville. You'd want it in a football stadium. We'll see. We'll see how it plays itself out. But again, I, I don't know what the the hang up is in Gainesville because Gainesville is really, believe it or not, is the best place. Now, the one thing that you may talk about is flights. I get it. Oh my gosh, the airport, the airport. So it's not. No, it's what 70, 70 miles, sixty eight miles to fly into Jacksonville and go from there. Gainesville can to hold flights. I mean, the football they fly out of Gainesville. When you're talking about NFL teams flying in and execs flying in, and can Gainesville's airport hold that capacity? Don't know. That that's the knock, right? Orlando is picked because of flights. Daytona, well, Daytona's airport's not that much bigger. So if you're going to go to Daytona, it's a novelty act. I, it's a it's a negotiating standpoint. But. Look, that year, they're going to play multiple home games in London because it just makes you more money. And then, why, why it gets tricky after that? The Jags playing multiple games in London, then they come back to Jacksonville. The city of Jacksonville at that point will have shelled out a billion dollars for a stadium. You're going to look around and go, okay, this stuff of playing game, multiple games in London ends. We're not shelling out a billion dollars so we lose a game every year. There's where things are going to get interesting. Should they do this? But they're exploring their options, and they're going to take the best deal. Where do they get their biggest cut of revenue? Does this allow Orlando, if they do it at the Citrus Bowl, to pump in an extra $40, $50 million renovating that place? It's still You're going to bake in Orlando. You're going to bake like a potato at Daytona. Gainesville, it's hot, but you have a shot at a little bit of shade, depending on the time of day. But you're going to bake everywhere else. Gainesville's hot. 
but not as hot as Jacksonville, not as hot as Daytona, and not as hot as Orlando for games. Especially if, you know, Ben Hill Griffin Stadium goes under some major renovations that they're talking in the next 36 months. So it'll be interesting to see. But I think the best thing of that, if you're going to do that, three Daytona, and you can do your primetime games in Daytona. Three in Gainesville. In Gainesville would be one o'clock games on Sunday. That's how that could fit. And then your London games. Okay, how? Let's say you make that work. Harpod Sports, the bar, podcast, media, audio, radio network. Follow, share, like, subscribe at Harp on Sports Twitter, at Harp on Sports Instagram, Auditory Route, Buzzsprout, Spotify, Apple Podcast, the bar there. And also Facebook page, Harp on Sports, Harp on Sports, the YouTube channel, the bar, and of course, HarpOnSports.com. Follow, share, like, subscribe on all those platforms. Remember, stay clean, stay focused, stay strong. Frankenstein, have fun with your friends.